Lovely seasons are going on. I was very happy to see Madhvi doing a wonderful job. And incidentally, 1998, I was her DND examiner. So I feel very proud also. That was a compliment. <laughs> wonderful. Next is Niketa. She has been also my fellow with me working especially Girgaon Institute where I was doing a lot of CTMR and I wanted her to do CTMR but she chose it and it is one of the best field today and she is the consultant radiologist at Red Link Diagnostic Imaging Center, Pantop Singh Hospital, Singapore and she is connected with the Royal College of Radiology by registrations and of course Indian registration is always there with her and she is very much interested in the continued medical education and especially she was involved with, she is involved still with the Singapore Regional Society 2015 onwards and today she is the chair. We must compliment her. We go to Singapore, have some good functions there. And she is absolute passion. She has written a book on essential of the mammography. And I am very happy. Nikita, you please go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's obviously a, my pleasure to be here and thanks to Dr. Uh, Omtavri for introducing me. So today I'm going to be sharing with you if you want to start doing contrast enhanced mammogram in your department or in your center, how do you introduce this in your normal workflow? So I'm just going to be sharing some tips and tricks which we have uh, used uh, and evolved with our uh, introduction. So I have no conflict of interest to disclose. So you all know that contrast enhanced mammogram is nothing but an a mammogram which has additional contrast information in it that makes it a real functional imaging. So instead of having four standard views, there are eight views now. So there will be low energy images and then there will be recombined images. And with this functional or addition of contrast, the sensitivity, specificity and performance is very close to that of MRI. And because of that, it is now getting introduced in many departments at a very fast speed. So. Uh, Pollock wanted me to uh, concentrate more on what is the basic principle and then how do we, what are the ways we can uh, start doing these services. So that's what I'm going to be talking more about. So contrast and enhanced mammogram is an advanced uh, mammography technique where the basic principle is that the double exposures are made in every compression one below the level of uh, iodine KH and the second subsequent exposure will be above the iodine KH. So we all know that uh, KH of iodine is 33 keV. So one will be below and one will be higher. So when you take the lower exposure image, that is very similar to your digital mammography, the higher exposure image which comes above it, there is information on iodine, but it is not an interpretable image. But when these two images are combined, the recombined image is the one which will now show you where is the contrast enhancement. All right, so what do, you, what do you require? Obviously, the first thing we require is the hardware and software to be uh, able to use this modality called contrast enhanced mammogram. Contrast injector is better to have it. If not, a hand injection is also possible. But contrast injector, if possible, we should try to get it. Most important is going to be preparing your team. And then last will be the teamwork with your referring physicians or clinicians. So, the addition of hardware software, the hardware is mainly what we call an additional filter, which is most of the time they use copper filter. As you see here, the low energy images which are used for normal mammogram, but for high energy images they need an extra filter, which is the copper filter, except for Siemens where they use titanium filter. And by using this, what is that they use? They make uh, low energy images which is in the range of 25 to 33 keV which is normal to normal mammogram or standard mammogram and the high energy images will be produced between the range of 45 to 49 keV as we have seen uh, in the previous image. Next we have to use contrast. So how much is the contrast? Everything follows that of a CT scan. That is what I teach to my technicians and students. Whatever you are using the amount uh, all the indications and contraindications for contrast injection, what are the things when you should not inject, just follow the CT scan protocol. So it is a non-iodinated, low osmolar iodinated contrast. Uh, the amount what we use is about 1.5 mils per kg body weight and it is injected at slightly higher rate of about 25 to 3 mils per second. So obviously if after every injection we want to do a small uh, saline flush. Uh, for contrast enhanced mammogram, the patient can exact the patient can easily sit in the chair you give the injection give her about a minute or so and then you can make her stand and then start doing the mammogram 
So you start training your technicians. Now this is one important thing they need to know that though there is no hurry, they don't need to rush, but at the same time this is a time sensitive modality. You cannot take your own time, have artifacts and repeat uh, exposures again and again. So they need to understand that this is a time sensitive procedure and that's why they should be very good in positioning, avoiding the artifact from first go itself. Uh, arrange either your staff nurse or medical officers to take IV line for the patients. And then on the day of procedure, once we have checked that this is an indicated patient, there is no contraindication, the patient is correct, uh, what we call time out, do the time out. And then once you, when the patient is ready, we keep everything ready. The machine is in the exact position where we are going to take the first exposure. The technician is ready. We have already kept the injection ready. And next thing which we always keep ready is the emergency trolley next to us. Okay, so the staff nurse has the emergency trolley. The technician is ready with the plane of uh, with the machine and we start the procedure. So we inject the contrast. It takes about 30 to 35 seconds to inject the contrast followed by flush. Then let the patient rest for a minute or so. And at about one and a half minute, we ask the patient to get up, come to the mammography machine. And then at first exposure, generally is done about two minutes. It takes about next four to five minutes to get four consecutive exposures. And at the end of it, you still have at least three or four minutes. So totally about 10 minutes to do your additional views if required. I personally do additional views the delayed views specifically in the patients where the patient is post neoadjuvant chemotherapy because sometimes they have delayed enhancements. Now preparing the radiologist. So we have the staff, nurse, the, uh, uh, the te technician, everybody ready, but we have to train ourselves first. So train the radiologist. From our side, we need to know what are the correct indication where we should use it. At the same time, what are the contraindications where we should not do this procedure. At our place, we are very selective in the beginning at least. We do not want to start with a, a negative notch uh, either in our mind or in the clinician's mind. So at the beginning, go a little slow, select correct patients, uh, rule out any uh, contraindications like allergies, compromised renal function. Obviously, we don't want to do this in a pregnant patient. And once you are ready, then only you start with these uh, services. And now with the availability of appropriate CM lexicon, we must train ourselves to use appropriate lexicon to report the CM as well. Allergic reactions, so when we started doing, the, doing CSM about 7 to 8 years ago, um, every time there is one CN on, in the department, our whole department was on toes, the breast imaging department, oh the, today there is CN because we are going to inject contrast. And that was always a fear, why? Right? Because for the last 15-20 years since I was in the department, we never had an injection of contrast and we were so worried, what if this patient gets allergy, what if this patient collapses? And then we had to tell our uh, staff that okay, all this thing is possible, we are going to be ready for it but remember that just next door which is CT scan they are doing 100 CT scan on one machine and there's nobody worrying about it so why do we worry it's just a fear but we need to be ready just in case if some anaphylactic reactions happen collaborate with the clinician so once we were ready we did few pilot cases and then we made a good presentation to the clinicians because they need to be convinced about sending the patient to you and for that you share the information with them, talk about indications, contraindications, benefits and most importantly once you have done that case, when you go to your MDTs, make it a point to show those images to them. What happens that after a few cases they will know how for mammogram and MRI they need you to report them but for CM nobody needs anybody, everybody can see the findings so easily and they get convinced. So talk to your clinicians and convince them. So this is a list of uh, indications uh, in screening and in diagnostic. And here we have to add one more now after dense trial. I think that intelligent risk patients also is a good uh, thing to start doing contrast enhanced mammogram. Okay, limitations. So as I mentioned, we must know what are the limitations of contrast enhanced mammogram and what are the contraindications. So a patient who has multiple drug allergies or who has no allergy to the iodine, then we should obviously avoid using contrast in this patient. A patient who cannot take radiation, pregnancy and lactation should not get CEM. At the same time, we must know the limitations. The limitations of mammogram are carried forward also to CEM. So a lesion which is very posterior, you cannot see the chest wall um, involvement. If a lesion is in extreme upper inner quadrant, the way it is not well seen on mammogram, it won't be even seen on CM well. Axillary evaluation is not going to be well done on CM. So these are the advantages of MRI which CM will never be able to take up, take, uh, uh, take up also. Okay, we must remember that 
CM, everything that enhances does not mean cancer. At the same time, if there is no enhancement, it's not that the patient cannot have cancer. There will be false positive and false negative. Most important false negative, we should remember that just like MRI, low grade DCI, so sometime invasive lobular carcinomas may not show enhancement. And if the patient is post neuroangiogen chemotherapy, then a delayed enhancement may be required to see to rule out any residual disease. Fibroadenoma and uh, papillomas are the commonest uh, false positive enhancement that we see in our practice. Okay, and in interpretation, I think there is a full talk on contrast enhanced mammogram lexicon, so we won't go into it. I would just want to make this point that utilize appropriate lexicon and then report your mammogram from beginning, CM from the beginning itself. So I want to show this last case, or sorry, this one case, uh, that this is where we have evolved now. After using it in our department, we have realized that it has a good strength where we can use this and this is one patient. So this patient comes with a palpable lump, new palpable lump and on clinical examination the surgeon feels that it is very hard lump, most likely malignant. So she comes with a question mark cancer on clinical diagnosis. Our previous protocol was that we would do mammogram and ultrasound. Now what we want to do is, is the patient is young patient is not likely to have compromised renal function, we, we offer them directly contrast enhanced mammogram. If in your mind, if there is any doubt that this may be a cyst, then just put a probe first that it is not a cyst because we don't want to offer CM for a cyst. But if it is a solid lesion, we don't want to start with mammogram. We directly do contrast enhanced mammogram. Why? Because low energy images are same as your digital mammography images which will give you enough information about architectural distortion, microcalcification. And then as soon as you have your second set of images, you know where exactly is the lesion, how is the extent of the disease, and now you know what you should do in targeted ultrasound. In this patient, just as the patient came I think she saw the clinic clinician in the morning. Uh, she was in our department at 10 o'clock. At 11.30 when she was going back, she already had a diagnosis of unifocal breast cancer in her. In, uh, in her. Like, so in one and a half hours when she goes out of the department, it's a staging scan done. Because uh, we don't want to even do an ultrasound of the opposite breast now. We don't want false positive. So after doing CSM, we just did uh, targeted ultrasound, axillary ultrasound, lymph nodes look, look negative. So now when she goes out, I'm going to tell my surgeon that she has a Byrex 5 lesion, most likely a unifocal right breast cancer, lymph node negative, done. She is on the biopsy in the afternoon or next day and she is staged, right? So these are the way you can utilize this modality as well, one-stop investigation. So overall advantages of contrast enhanced mammogram that it is very quick, relatively affordable, very easy to interpret. Uh, that's why it's a very sharp learning curve and sometimes whenever I look at CM, I think that my clinicians now don't know, need me to report them. So obviously you start feeling out of job. Uh, it's not affected by breast density. It has very high sensitivity, specificity and negative predictive value similar to MRI of about 98%. But remember that no enhancement does not mean no cancer. There may be some cancers possible. It can be used in the patient who have got contraindications of MRI like pacemakers or who have claustrophobia and they are well tolerated by the patient or also in, in fact they are preferred by the patient over MRI. So, now we have, when you start implementing the services, don't stop there. Don't be happy that now you've implemented the services, everybody's liking it and you are very happy with it. Always remember to audit. Whenever you do something new, services audit. Learn from every single case. Audit your reports regarding your interpretation, whatever you say, whether it was, whether if you did biopsy, then whether uh, it was a correct biopsy or whether it was a correct suggestion and can you improve from that because none of us start at the bank. We all are improving with our experience and that will happen only if you do audit and follow up of these patients. Involve in some research, get involved in the research and continue to uh, learn and update your knowledge and share this so that you can together as a team make this as a better and better uh, experience for the patient care. So thank you very much. Again, I would like to invite all of you to Singapore for Breast Imaging Conference. And I really want to see this uh, keen uh, radiologist coming from India to represent India in uh, Singapore. We have, uh, we are thinking of making and joining the hands of strength together of all these communities of breast imagers from different part of uh, Asia hopefully we can evolve together as an Asian breast imaging society in future. So that is what the plan is that in Singapore when we all come together, we talk together and then see if there is a uh, possibility because we can learn a lot from each other. Our diseases are different, our spectrum of 
uh, way uh, resources are different compared to the western world but together we can learn and become a stronger society together as an asian uh, group so i really exp uh, i'm hoping that many of you can come join and we can together work for patient uh, bringing up the uh, uh, patient uh, breast care in asia and that is why it's not our our logo is shaping breast care in asia and not in singapore because we don't want to limit ourselves to one place we want to really improve for everybody thank you very much and i'm happy to take questions at the end thank you thank you nikita for excellent talk and briefing about contrast enhanced mammography which is upcoming and uh, thank you so much question answers later on no next week next talk is uh, by dr vinu singla madam uh, madam is a professor in neurodiagnosis pgi mer chandigarh Uh, madam is interested in uh, breast imaging and intervention uh, she has more than 70 publications including original papers and book chapters uh, in in cooperation into the current workflow and many of the residents sitting here and even radiologists would like to incorporate this upcoming modality into the routine day to day practice so i will be taking you through systematic reporting of cm as per the byrads lexicon so this is a very easy modality to report now the beauty of cm is that when you do see something on your fftm image cm not only shows it to you better there are some other pathologies which were not seen on your fftm image and cm brings it out so beautifully now the sections of cm reporting are divided into four sections that is general considerations byrads imaging lexicon reporting and guidance the general considerations they tell us the key terms to be used and tell us that the term cm that is contrast enhanced mammography needs to be used and we should not use spectral or digital or dual mammography as these are more vendor specific the terms to be used for the images that we get are the low energy images which are quite similar to our fft Im images and the recombined images which are the post contrast subtracted images and the high energy images these are not used by the radiologists for uh, reporting as these are not in interpretable so coming to the lexicon per se the lexicon begins with tissue composition as with our routine ffdm and we assess the low energy images for the composition just like our conventional mammography following which we assess the background parenchymal enhancement level that is minimal mild moderate or marked the background parenchymal enhancement is also assessed for its symmetry whether it is symmetric that is it is almost equivalent on both the sides like in this case this was a mass which was showing negative internal enhancement uh, with a thin rim like enhancement and i would like to bring your attention to this background parenchymal uh, enhancement which is quite symmetric on both the sides and these uh, were the fft images of this case which showed that uh, this corresponded to a well circumscribed mass and on ultrasound it was anechoic cyst and there were other cysts in the breast as well and background parenchymal enhancement can also be asymmetric where it can be more in one breast compared to the other breast now the findings in cm can be the findings seen on low energy images only on rc images that is recombined images or it may be seen on both low energy and recombined images now coming to the finding seen on low energy images only so these are interpreted as per the routine by rads that we use for our ffdm reporting as mass calcifications asymmetry architectural distortions and so on coming to the findings Uh, which are recombined image only findings that is the cm only detected findings these are reported as mass non mass enhancement enhancing asymmetry and one uh, uh, one thing that is unique to cm is the lesion conspicuity we have also have to tell how conspicuous is the lesion and i'll take you through these so a mass we all know is a three dimensional space occupying lesion with convex outer borders and the descriptors for this mass include the shape margins and internal enhancement characteristics coming to the shape the shape may be round or oval both of these were triple negative cancers or it may be irregular again in these cases of invasive ductal carcinomas 
Now coming to the margins of the mass, the margins may be circumscribed as in this case of a fibre adenoma. We can see that we can draw uh, the margins with a pencil. And this was a case of a triple negative cancer. Circumscribed margins mean that there is an abrupt transition of the margins from the surrounding parenchyma. And this was a case of Philodes tumor again with circumscribed margins. The margins may be not circumscribed when they are irregular or jagged or uneven margins. They may be speculated margins when you see lines irradiating from the mass. Now coming to the internal enhancement characteristics. Now internal enhancement characteristics the uh, mass may be enhancing uniformly when you call it as a homogeneously enhancing mass or it may be not uniformly enhancing mass when it is a heterogeneously enhancing mass. These were three different cases of retro malignancy and in this case we could also pick up a satellite lesion showing the value of CEM. So mass may be enhancing more at the periphery when you call it a rim enhancement like this was a case of a TNBC showing modular rim enhancement at the periphery and this was a case of granulomatous mastitis showing many conglomerate rim enhancing lesions which were confirmed on MR as conglomerate micro abscesses which were enhancing peripherally and on ultrasound as tubular hypoechoic areas insinuating in the mass with increased peripheral vascularity. Now apart from mass, the finding that we can come across is an area of enhancement distinct from the surrounding parenchyma without the space occupying effect and we call it a non-mass enhancement. We have to describe it as per the distribution and the internal enhancement pattern. The distribution is focal as in this case of an obvious malignancy that was there in the inner breast, we can see a focal area of enhancement in the outer breast making the tumor multicentric. The outer uh, one was uh, uh, proven to be BCIS. The, the enemy, the second type can be linear. When it is in a line or a linear array like in this case of an intraductal papilloma and this was a case of a DCIS with microinvasion. Again we can see that there is non-mass enhancement in a linear pattern in the posterior breast. The distribution is said to be segmental when it is in a triangular fashion with the apex pointing towards the nipple. And it is regional when it is involving more than one ductal system or multi-regional when it is involving the uh, multiple geographic patchy areas of the breast with interspersed normal breast parenchyma. It is said to be diffuse when it is involving almost the entire breast parenchyma in a random fashion. So after distribution we tell the internal enhancement pattern of the non-mass enhancement. It can be homogeneous again when it is uniform as in this case of a focal homogeneous non-mass enhancement in the upper breast. And it can be heterogeneous like this was a case who came to us with a left nipple discharge and it is very difficult to tell on the uh, 2D mammogram FFTM images which is the pathology. However, on giving contrast, we could see that the, there is this large area of heterogeneous non-mass enhancement in a segmental distribution in the left retroareolar location. And this is another pattern of non-mass enhancement which is of a clumped variety wherein you see multiple cobblestone type of enhancement that is of varying sizes and shapes which may show confluence at places. It speaks for itself that this is a clumped kind of a non-mass enhancement. Basically the descriptors are quite similar to that of MR and the only descriptor that is unique to CEM is an enhancing asymmetry which we don't have an MR. So this is a, a finding that is enhancing only on one view in recombined images and it has to be described as per the internal enhancement pattern whether it is homogeneous or heterogeneous. This is a homogeneous uh, enhancing asymmetry which was seen only on the MLO view. We cannot make out where it is on the CC view. However, on the uh, MR that was done to confirm the presence or absence of this asymmetry as a true finding of concern, we could see that it corresponded to a posteriorly located irregular mass that was confirmed to be invasive ductal carcinoma. The Enhancing asymmetry can also be heterogeneous as in this case we can see again a heterogeneous asymmetry only on the CC view not on the MLO view and this was a ductal carcinoma in C2. Now apart from these findings of mass, non-mass enhancement and enhancing asymmetry we also have to tell the degree of enhancement relative to the 
background parenchyma. That is low, moderate or high. Like this was a case of extremely dense breasts that came with a palpable mass. Again, on 2D FFDM, it's very difficult for us to tell where the mass is. However, on giving contrast, we could see a heterogeneously enhancing mass in the upper breast, making the diagnosis easy. And we can also try to take biopsy from the more uh, area of enhancement. So that also helps us out. So this is an example of a case of a moderately uh, conspicuous mass, which was showing increased density in the left uh, retroradiolar location on FFDM images. However, it corresponded to a, a large area of non-mass enhancement, again making the interpretation and the diagnosis and the extent of pathology easy. So this was this, uh, an example of a triple, uh, of a case of Philodes tumor which was highly conspicuous on the CEM images and showed cleft-like cystic, uh, cystic structures on the ultrasound images. So the findings seen on early images may be associated with enhancement on recombined images. So these are the findings which are seen on both LE and RC images. So as per the morphology goes, it has to be explained as far as the mammographic lexicon is used. So the internal enhancement pattern of these has to be explained as homogeneous, heterogeneous and rim enhancement. And also the extent of enhancement has to be told whether the lesion is enhancing partly, completely or is not showing any enhancement. Associated features have to be told as in our routine mammography by Raj's lexicon as per the nipple retraction, skin retraction, thickening, axillary lymphadenopathy, etc. Now the report structure has to be formulated based on this, uh, these indication to assessment and management and this is a sample report that we follow in our department and it begins with the history, indication, technique and thereafter the dose of contrast and the rate at which contrast was administered. Then we tell the best composition when we start describing the findings first, first and foremost. Thereafter the background parenchymal enhancement, artifacts if any, suppose there is a con uh, contrast contamination the technologist has touched the finger or some contrast course that also needs to be mentioned on the report so that the cons uh, consultant who is seeing it after you or the surgeon who is seeing after you can relate to these. Then the non-enhancing lesions have to be described based on, based on the mammography lexicon. So first the low energy images have to be read and then we have to describe the findings if they are seen on the low energy as mass microcalcifications, focal asymmetry, distortion etc. Then we come to the enhancing lesions and described them as a mass, non-mass enhancement or single view enhancing asymmetry like we have uh, uh, recently gone through. Then we tell the associated features of nipple retraction, skin thickening, external lymphadenopathy etc. Other studies if done like ultrasound or magnification views also need to be mentioned in the report and then we come to the BIRADS assessment and recommendations. So coming to some important frequently asked questions related to CEM BIRADS lexicon, there are a couple of them on the there, just last two slides. So we often think that if we don't have an access to MRI at our place, how should we handle the recombined images only findings? So if we have a finding which is seen only on the recombined images, first and foremost our good friend ultrasound should be done and a targeted ultrasound should be attempted like we do in an MR, however, if ultrasound is negative. And I don't think if an ultrasound is negative, the patient should undergo an MR However, if the patient is not affording, MR is not available or negative as in a given situation, we need to review the recombined image only findings and if the finding is of low suspicion, the patient can be kept on a short interval follow up with CEM. And if the recombined image only finding is very suspicious, we need to think of a CEM biopsy and if CEM biopsy is not available, then there, we can still help the patient using stereotactic guidance and landmarks or we can do a pre-op localization using landmarks followed by a surgical excision. And also the, an, another important uh, question is that when we see a recombined image only finding only on one view, what should I do next? First and foremost we have to determine whether it's a true enhancing asymmetry or a part of the background parenchymal enhancement. If it is a real finding we first try to naturally see it on ultrasound 
the sound and uh, do the biopsy accordingly. However, if ultrasound is negative, we perhaps have to do an MR and if the suspicious finding is seen on MR, we may do a CM or a, an MR guided biopsy depending on the availability. And if MR is unrevealing, again the patient can be kept on a six month follow up uh, as per the clinical decision. The third important uh, thing that has to be carried home is that the term focus, though we continue to use it for MR reporting in our current Bhairat's fifth lexicon that we are following till date, it is not used in uh, CM lexicon because a mass that is enhancing, uh, because anything that is enhancing but is less than 5 millimeter uh, in size has to be described as per the morphology as a mass or a non-mass enhancement and according described for its shape, margins, enhancement, characteristics, etc. So the final word is that we need to review both low energy and recombined images. The reading of CEM is very easy for people who are doing MR or, are, or have even uh, some experience with MR. The overall descriptors are quite similar to MR. There are two unique features, descriptors, which are there for CM, that is lesion conspicuity and enhancing asymmetry. CM is a promising technique and is an affordable alternative to MRI. And it's definitely the future for low resource countries like ours. So I leave you with this, that we need to tailor the best cancer journey to fit, uh, fit each individual's needs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Vinu Singla, madam. Uh, any questions? Thank you, madam. Good afternoon. We have uh, Rasmi Sudhir. I'm happy to see her again. I think last year she came here. Rasmi is there? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, Rasmi. So happy to see you again, Rasmi. Thank you, sir. Last year, uh, you were the speaker and I was the chair. Again, same combination is going on here. It is wonderful to see she has got, she is working in Apollo Hospital as a senior consultant, more than 15 years experience and now this experience is more than 3 years and she has done more than 1200 patients. You must give a big cake for this, you know, because we are not, I don't see any contrast enhanced mammography happening in Mumbai. I have not seen any image so far. So it is wonderful. Oh, she is doing so Thank sorry. You. I have not seen. I said I have not seen. So it's not so common and uh, it is good to learn from her experience what she can add, what are the problems going on and you can see, she will highlight us all those points. Thank you so much, Rasmi. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the kind introduction. So I'm going to talk on contrast enhanced mammography in Indian scenario, whether it's uh, going to be a boon or bane. So in the beginning, I'm going to tell you why we need contrast enhanced mammography, what are the background? Then what are the problems we face in implementing contrast enhanced mammography? We will see some of the advantages and then we conclude. So as we can see here, we know all know that breast cancer is the commonest cancer among women in India that consists of 27.7% of all cancer among women. 48% of women, they are less than 50 years of age. That is mainly because of population pyramid as we heard yesterday that more than 80% of people in India, they are less than 50 years of age. In premenopausal women, they are, no, they are likely to have dense breasts. And in dense breasts, contrast enhanced mammography has got significant role. In this graph, you can see that women who are younger, less than 50 or 60 years of age, they are, going, they are likely to have heterogeneously dense breasts or extremely dense breasts. In dense breast, there are certain challenges. They are independent risk of developing breast cancer. They have three to five times higher risk compared to the non-dense breast or fatty breast. They have increased chances of missing because of t t tissue superimposition. Still, till date, there is lack of consensus in dense breast which modality to be used as a supplemental screening tool. In India, again, there is restricted access to the supplemental modalities. We can use ultrasound, MRI, or contrast enhanced mammography. Each of these modalities, they have shown improved cancer detection rate when they are added to 2D mammography or 3D mammography. 
but there are certain factors which helps in choosing which one to go for the first and foremost cost effectiveness whenever you talk you give the options to the patient first thing they will ask you what is the cost are they available or they require certain upgradation or there are certain requirements which can be uh, make them available for the breast imaging what are the clinical outcomes is the patient going to accept this test if we tell them so i am going to discuss the cost eff effectiveness factor first in western literature they don't talk much about the cost effectiveness but in less developed nation like ours cost is one of the most important factor because we don't have any medical insurance coverage for the breast screening or supplemental screening or breast evaluation there is limited facilities in the government hospitals there is lack of government policies for the screening or supplemental screening packages ultrasound is the most widely available imaging modalities for the supplemental screening too that's why it is most commonly used in india next factor which one which one is available or what can be done to make them available so i'm going to talk in terms of equipment infrastructures so we have three kinds of infrastructures one there are already existing general scanners which can be used for the breast imaging as well like ultrasound and mri ultrasound is widely available but mri is not so widely available second group of equipments they are already available but there are certain requirements needed for making them available for the breast imaging like city where i live we have population of 1.2 crores we may have 100 plus mri scanners but i can tell you less than 10 scanners they have mri breast coils so only less than 10 mr available for the 1.2 scan 2 crore populations if we have dbt again they need certain hardware and software to make them available for to work as cem because they need copper filter and most of the 2d mammography they cannot be upgraded to 2 uh, to cm dbt can be upgraded if you add copper filter and the software for the contrast enhanced mammography third group of equipments they are dedicated for the breast imaging like contrast enhanced mammography so whenever you ask your hospital management you want cem they have to think 10 times are we going to use this for other system as well because it is going to be organ specific or indication specific so when we compare the cost modeling between mri and cem study says that cem is less costly more accessible than mri with potentially faster examination time and reading time but if you go in practical if you want to make cem widely available if you consider the existing facilities and you make the cm widely available the additional cost may not be different from the mri scanners because not all the existing mri units can be adapted or upgraded to deliver contrast enhanced imaging hence the cost of indication specific cm may not be much different from the contrast enhanced mri coming to the clinical outcomes If you compare ultrasound, MRI, and CEM, ultrasound definitely detects additional cancers. It can detect up to 3.5 to 5 additional cancers per thousand women, but at the cost of high false positive rates and low specificity. So you'll end up doing many unnecessary benign breast biopsies. Contrast enhanced MRI. It is the most sensitive technology. We all, all of us know it. it can detect up to 15.5 can additional cancers per 1000 women but again at the cost of high false positive rates hence contrast enhanced mri is only recommended as a supplemental tool for high risk women cem studies have shown the sensitivity is very close to mri and the false positive rates are very low compared to the mri almost half it can be used in dense breast with increased risk of developing breast cancer such as intermediate risk or high risk women who cannot undergo mri a lot of studies have been done and they have compared contrast enhanced mammography and mri according to each indication and they have found that cm is very close to mri may not be better than mri 
but the sensitivity of detecting and specificity is close to MRI, specificity may be even higher than the MRI. This is the latest study published in Radiology Journal, November 2023. So in this study they have shown that they had 12 different readers. All these 12 readers, they read digital mammography, contrast enhanced mammography and MRI of all the patients independently and blindly. And they came to the conclusion that CEM is not inferior in performance to the MRI, but it was much superior to digital mammography. Contrast enhanced mammography, it is mainly used in dense breast as a primary, uh, it can be used as diagnostic settings, as a problem solving tool in symptomatic or asymptomatic women, preoperative staging in diagnosed cases of breast cancer, response assessment in post neoadjuvant chemotherapy. It can be used in women, asymptomatic women as intermediate or high risk screen as well. But there is radiation exposure slightly higher than the digital mammography, which is 1.2 to 1.8 times higher than the 2D mammography, but well within the uh, accepted limits. This is an example you can see a 57 year old woman who had left breast lobular carcinoma in situ. She was excised and clip was placed. Now she was on follow up. Two years after the, or after the excision, she was found to have an enhancing lesion in the left breast lower inner quadrant and you can see that it was well correlated with second look ultrasound as well but the lesion was not seen on the 2D mammography. Another case you can see small enhancing focus on MRI as well as on CEM and both were well correlated. Again this was proven to be carcinoma breast. So if you compare CEM and MRI in screening, all the studies they have shown that CEM is very close to MRI and it, is, it has got less false positive rates. If you compare the cost, contra contrast enhanced mammography, test cost is less than one third of the MRI. So definitely in population like ours, cost matters a lot. So CM can be used more often than the MRI if it is available. CM is very handy if you use it as a problem solving tool. It is just available along with the mammography if it is there and you don't need to have extra appointment for doing contrast enhanced mammography. You can finish on the same day and you will have very fast results. In this patient you can see she is a 53 year old woman. She had undergone left MRM 4 years ago. She was on surveillance. Right 2D mammography was done. You can see that there is subtle asymmetry but not sure. When you are not sure at that time whether what to do, whether to do MRI or to ask her to come after 6 months or put her on regular screening or do ultrasound guided biopsy or stereotactic biopsy. If you are not sure, in that case contrast has got very important role, you just add contrast, you will get the answer. If it is enhancing, you are going ahead with the biopsy. If it is not enhancing, you can ask her to come after one year. Next case, 60 year old woman who had come first time for the screening and you can see in the left upper outer quadrant there was a focal asymmetry. Ultrasound correlate was there but it was looking very benign. But coming for the first time for the screening, she may not come back again for the screening. So you would like to do biopsy. Before doing biopsy, contrast mammography was done and there was no enhancement at all. So it was very sure that uh, we are dealing with benign lesion or normal breast parenchyma. It was proven to be fibroadenosis. So contrast mammography definitely it can avoid lot of unnecessary benign breast biopsy if you do in diagnostic setting. For staging, again CM is very close to MRI but not as good as MRI because because of tissue superimposition, the additional cancer detection may be lower than the MRI. If the cancers are located peripherally, they are not included in the field of view. Again, that can be missed on CEM, but can be easily picked up on the MRI. This case, you can see that CEM and MRI findings are superimposable. There are three small enhancing lesions seen in the outer quadrant, very well on both the modalities. So here, both are equal. But in this case, you can see that index mass is nicely seen on CEM and MRI both. And in the ABC, you can see there is index mass is seen nicely on both the modality. But there was one lesion picked up in the prepectoral region in the posterior third of the breast, which was missed on the CEM. So for peripheral lesion, CEM, CEM is not as good as MRI. It can be missed. 
enhancing region seen only on CEM, but not they, they, they are not seen on any image or digital mammography. Again, if you have CEM guided biopsy, you can go ahead and do, or you can put them on follow up. Best thing you do ultrasound. If you see most of the time, you will be able to see. You can do ultrasound guided biopsy. Otherwise, I think Dr. Vinu has dealt very well. So to conclude, in less developed nation like India, where more than 80% of population is less than 50 years of age. Ch incidence of breast cancer is rising, prevalence of dense breast is high, where the cost plays a major role in deciding the test. Definitely CM has got strong potential because it is much superior to digital mammography and 3D mammography with or without ultrasound. Sensitivity is close to MRI. There is no requirement for additional appointments or waiting time. Higher patient acceptance rate, short interpretation and reading time. You don't need to apply for MRI breast fellowship to learn CEM. You can just learn by reading 75 to 100 CEM and it's much more cost effective test than the MRI. But there are certain concerns. Implementation cost is high, radiation exposure and there is minimal risk of allergic reaction. Thank you. Thank you Rasmi, excellent talk here. Everybody has any queries, please ask her. One or two qu qu queries can I ask? Yes. One I just wanted to know is there any quantification? This mild variety is very sometimes suspicious, you know, whether the in density is, you know, what any quantification method has come in this? Yes, sir. So for breast density, there is ACR criteria, sir. A, B, C, D. So A and B are considered less dense fatty breasts. C and D is dense breasts. But can you quantify? No, quantify that? just by observations. Uh, observations. Yes. Sometimes we can make mistake. In that, you know, it is happening, seeing. Secondly, I just wanted to know about, you know, there's a false positive. We do contrast enhancement, even infection will enhance. So, few things will happen, you know. Any false positive came across, so we can Yes, tell sir. Uh, definitely, uh, contrast enhanced mammography also shows a lot of background parenchymal enhancement. And sometimes, uh, the benign lesions also can show enhancement. So, in those cases, again, we go back to see the morphology, how is the morphology. But sometimes, we do see just the enhancement. There is no uh, mammography or ultrasound correlate. So, in those cases, I think we have to, if we have facility, we can do CM guided biopsy or we can put them on follow-up. Thank you. So it's my pleasure uh, to introduce and welcome our next speaker, Dr. Shilpa Lad. Dr. Shilpa Lad needs no introduction at every uh, academic effort to uh, enhance ourselves on breast imaging. Every breast imaging conference, we have Dr. Shilpa Lad who is speaking on various topics and helping the young residents and fellow radiologists all the same. Dr. Shilpa is subspeciality head ICRI IRI and also member of the governing council uh, of breast imaging society of india she was the former consultant at ottawa hospital canada i welcome you dr shilpa over to you thank you very kindly for the introduction and uh, uh, thank you everyone in the audience i see some of my teachers and mentors including dr deepak patkar in the audience so uh, much respect and thank you for being here on this morning um, after two days of uh, intense learning. You are still here on a Sunday morning, so first and foremost, heartfelt gratitude for that. Um, so without any further ado, um, let's start. I dedicate my talk to my beloved Sadhguru, Shivaman Rao Pai. Um, and uh, here are my disclaimers. Uh, also, this morning we have seen some excellent talks on contrast enhanced mammography where we have gone through the techniques, where we have gone through um, the uh, how we integrate it into our system. Now the third part of this is about how we uh, synergize it, which means we were already doing mammograms and ultrasounds and breast MRs. So uh, how do we incorporate or why do we incorporate rather a newer modality? So why another technology to diagnose the same disease? Okay, so this is a question which commonly gets asked by our surgeons to us. Uh, sometimes you tell us mammo, sometimes you tell us ultrasound, till now you were saying MRI, now you want to add something else, why? Can't you come to a diagnosis after 20 years of experience in this field? So this is what we are going to try and answer in the next 10 to 12 minutes. So um, why we need something like uh, a functional imaging? Because 
In addition to what we get from structural imaging, from mammogram or ultrasound, functional imaging in the form of contrast adds value to it. Okay, so let's look at the theory and technique, clinical applications and how we can introduce it. So to understand why another technology, let's look at a case. Now this was a 48 year old, this patient herself is a surgeon who came with a new onset palpable lump in the left breast. Despite all the years of experience, no breast radiologist can ever say if there is a cancer in this breast and if there is a cancer, where the cancer is. And the reason being density. That's correct. It's a very dense mammogram. So in this case, what do we do? We did a targeted ultrasound corresponding to the area of new onset palpable lump and lo and behold, there is an irregular enhancing mass, irregular hypoechoic mass. This was biopsy, it was in keeping with invasive duct car carcinoma. So in this case, why did we do a MRI? Because the patient is young, the breast is dense, we didn't know if there were any other lesions, did she need a lumpectomy or would she need a mastectomy. So that's why contrast enhanced MRI was done and that showed unifocal cancer. Okay, so factors affecting cancer detection on mammogram. The first one is density. It plays a vital role for lesion detection on a mammogram, not just in a screening setting, but also in diagnostic setting, which means the patient comes with a complaint and despite of that, we struggle to come to a diagnosis in that. In those cases, supplemental imaging becomes important. What is the supplemental imaging available to us? Supplemental imaging, the easiest modality and the one modality which has given us results consistently is ultrasound. Inexpensive, readily available, no radiation. Even in the screening setting, we find that in addition to those six per thousand cancers that we detect on screening mammograms, if we added ultrasound to it, we would detect another 3.7 cancers per thousand. However, there is a problem. And what is the problem? The problem is we see many more little uh, shadowing lesions here and there which leads to more number of biopsies. Of those more number of biopsies, 93% turn out to be benign which means it leads to more work uh, in form of interventions. Therefore, is there anything else we can do to increase our sensitivity and specificity becomes the question. Okay, so here's case two. Now what is the other factor that affects other than density? Here is a 42 year old, she comes for a screening mammogram, completely asymptomatic. The breast is not that dense, we would call it type B, scattered fibroglandular densities. On this, when we give the first look, we uh, do we see anything? Perhaps there is a focal asymmetry in the left breast, lower inner quadrant. That's our first impression, okay? On tomosynthesis also, I do not see any architectural distortions or speculated masses, okay? However, when we do an ultrasound of the area of focal asymmetry, we find what looks like a fibroadenoma in the lower inner quadrant, but there is another issue that we come up with. In the right retroareolar region, there are dilated ducts with interductal lesion. It can happen, right? In a, a perimenopausal woman who has born children, sometimes they can be ectatic ducts, but those ectatic ducts are often bilateral. So we decided to look at the left retroareolar region. In the left retroareolar region, however, there are no dilated ducts, okay? The ducts look within normal limits. So now, are we worried? We are a little worried, but the patient does not have any symptoms. Should we do a biopsy? When we said this to the patient, when we offered a biopsy, she was like, Doctor, but I just came for a screening mammogram. What biopsy are you talking about? I don't have any complaints, no symptoms. So the best we could do at the time was offer her a contrast-enhanced mammography. On contrast-enhanced mammography, more than half the breast enhanced. Yeah. So this is what happens. She's asymptomatic. She does not have a dense breast. We see something incidental on ultrasound. And on CEM, on contrast-enhanced MRI, uh, there is asymmetric non-mass enhancement. All this was in keeping with high-grade DCIS. So the second factor that affects lesion detection. 
neoangiogenesis. That also plays a vital role in detection of cancers. And therefore, MRI has, contrast enhanced MRI has the highest sensitivity compared to the other modalities that we were using so far. So anatomical and structural imaging versus functional imaging is what we are talking about. So now let's look at just supplemental imaging. If we added ultrasound, we would detect 3.7 extra cancers per thousand. Now you add MRI to it and you will detect 14.7 more cancers per thousand where even ultrasound was negative. So that is the power of um, uh, functional imaging in the form of contrast, okay? Which brings us to the point that mammogram and ultrasound alone may sometimes be giving us a false sense of security. This is an important point for all of us to understand which means if there is a need, we need to do that functional imaging test. So, which is the commonly available functional imaging test so far? We had contrast enhanced MRI, but the availability, 1.5 through 3 Tesla magnet with a dedicated breast coil, cost of the equipment, image acquisition, longer time for image, uh, image acquisition, claustrophobia, and also add to this expertise for interpretation. Okay, you need to have seen and done as many MRs to be able to come to a, a reasonably reliable interpretation. Okay, so the question comes in a country like India, like Rashmi was talking about, is there a one-stop shop, something which is cost effective and something that helps avoid all this running around for the patient. So, we look at the potential of 2D FFDM, which means mammography plus contrast enhanced mammography. What are the advantages? It is done on the same equipment. I am not going to go through all the technical parts because Nikita has already covered it very well um, and how we do it. But these are the basic things that we need and they are available in every single radiology department. We do have a power injector, we do have iodinated contrast media, normal, like even if there is small contrast media reactions, we have the carts to take care of it, okay. We have been doing it for a long time, so we can take care of it, okay. And contrast media reactions are relatively rare, so we need not uh, be very afraid of it, but at the same time be cognizant of the fact that they happen, okay. So, what how do we do it? It is practically done the same way like a mammogram is done. So no additional training of your technologist is required. The two images required are the CC and MLO views after we inject the contrast and then we acquire the low energy image which is equivalent of the FFDN and a high energy with post processing which is equivalent to the subtracted image that we see on MRI. So practically speaking this is what you will see. This is a 2D image of the patient. This is the low energy CEDM. So there we start seeing some enhancement. And this is the subtracted image where just the enhancing lesion is seen. Okay, so applications and indications, how we can synergize, how we can put it into practice in our own practices. So where can be used as a problem solving tool? Here is a case, patient presents with a metastatic lymph node with unknown primary. Okay, on the mammogram, all we see is this enlarged lymph node. Okay. We do not see a discrete mass microcalcifications or architectural distortion on the 2D mammogram. Now I don't have the 3D tomosynthesis view to show you, but we did not get any additional information from the 3D either. Okay, in this case we decided to do a contrast enhanced mammography and there we have an enhancing mass which was seen again on second look ultrasound and was biopsied and this definitely was a metastatic axillary lymph node with a invasive breast carcinoma. This turned out to be a triple negative breast cancer. Another case, now this patient has already had a left lumpectomy with axillary dissection a few years ago. Now she comes with an enlarged lymph node in the right axilla. Okay, are we in a position to say if there is a primary in the breast? Based on the mammography findings, it does not look like there is anything in the breast other than the enlarged lymph node. So in this case, how do we problem solve? We decided to do a contrast enhanced mammography. The enlarged lymph node definitely enhanced, but there was no other enhancement in the breast. Look at how much confidence we get in diagnosis. And like Nikita said earlier, these are some of the images even the surgeons can interpret. Okay, so they are also comfortable with what we are saying or what we are showing. No other abnormal enhancement in bilateral breast, that was the only thing that was positive. What about in uh, 
uh, intermediate masses or indeterminate masses on mammogram or ultrasound. Now, again, this is a 69 year old. She had a right lumpectomy for breast cancer. Even at 69, see how dense her breast is. Okay. Now she complains of a new onset palpable lump in the right breast since two weeks. Remember, when we do ultrasound in these dense and heterogeneously dense breasts, we do see shadowing here and there every now and again. Okay, it's very hard to know whether it's a real mass or just shadowing from the Cooper's ligaments. So doing ultrasound also, that's why it is known to have a ultrasound, supplemental ultrasound is known to have a high false positive rate. In this case, when we did the ultrasound, corresponding to the area of palpable concern, we saw this hypoechoic shadowing mass. But there was an additional similar appearing mass that we saw in the same breast, one at 7 o'clock, one at 9 o'clock. Now given that she had new onset palpable lumps, we went ahead with the biopsies, okay? Just give me two more minutes, please. So, before we did the biopsies, like she was hell-bent that we were going to have that biopsy. But before we did the biopsy, we offered her a contrast-enhanced mammography. On the contrast-enhanced mammography, what did we see? There was no abnormal enhancement anywhere, okay? It was a good learning lesson for us. So, we did the biopsy also, and the biopsy proved that it was just benign stromal fibrosis. There was no cancer seen. So, the, the all the earlier speakers, the way they were speaking about sensitivity, sensitivity, specificity, it really is there, very sensitive and specific, contrast-enhanced mammography, okay? Now, what about persisting focal asymmetries? Now, this was a case where uh, we suspected uh, um, uh, the patient had a new onset palpable lump in the right breast. Of course, on the mammogram, we saw a mass with microcalcifications around 6 o'clock position. But also in the contralateral breast, there was an asymmetry, okay? Now, on ultrasound, both areas corresponded to irregular hypoechoic masses with posterior shadowing. So the decision was obviously to go ahead with bilateral breast biopsies. In the between, the step that we did was contrast enhanced mammography. What did the contrast enhanced mammography show? There was enhancement corresponding to the new onset palpable lump on the right, but no enhancement in the left. What did the biopsy show? On the biopsy, the right was invasive cancer, left was stromal fibrosis. So the positive predictive value of contrast enhanced mammography is really high. Okay, so it gives us the confidence when we say that this is stromal fibrosis, surgeon did not intervene, leave the left breast alone. Okay, so coming back to the case that I showed you, what would have changed in this case had we done a contrast enhanced mammography instead of a contrast enhanced MRI? Contrast enhanced MRI was superb. The, will contrast enhanced mammography stand that test? So here is the CEDM in the same pa patient. Okay, are we confident enough? Is it showing us enough? The answer is yes. Okay, so subtracted CDM, we can find like the enhancement is almost equivalent to what we would see on a contrast enhanced MRI, which increases our uh, diagnostic ability, our confidence. Uh, so to summarize, density and tissue superimposition decrease sensitivity on mammogram. Supplemental ultrasound definitely increases our cancer detection rate but also false positive biopsies. Contrast enhanced MRI, no doubt, has a very high sensitivity, is getting better on the specificity also, but there are limitations in a country like ours, availability, cost, expertise. So in such a situation, contrast enhanced mammography may be that one problem solving tool, that one stop shop, okay, which gives us enough information about anatomical as well as functional imaging to be a cost effective substitute for contrast enhanced MRI. And the good news is the accuracy approaches that of MRI for cancer detection. So let's synergize and work together towards the goal of global breast health. Thank you very kindly for your attention. Talks, as we can see, uh, sharing your experiences and your uh, knowledge on these help all of us to go ahead with decisions on choosing the appropriate modalities for patient workup. So we've heard such amazing talks and I'm here to just put everything in a small nutshell about each, uh, uh, each talk that we have heard. Uh, with Dr. Thakur, we all know she introduced us to all the imaging modalities, the tools which we have at hand for breast imaging. 
Dr. Tanvi gave us an excellent overview of the anatomy and correlation of the uh, imaging structure, a fair knowledge of radiological anatomy of the breast with correlation on MAMO, MRI and ultrasound. Uh, well, I always believe that what the mind knows, the eye see. Also, during interventions, we know we need to know what to sample, that we need to sample the correct lesions. We also saw important tips on triangulation of masses using the CC, MLO, and lesion plane. I think Tanvi, that was that's she is really you're really the best. <laughs> Beautiful image, uh, example of the synergy with an orchestra that we all need to work as a team. And her last line says, value and respect, build on strength and compensate. Dr. Madhvi's uh, lecture uh, enlightened us on the strengths and pitfalls of DBT and how it helps us in looking for cancers, which were supported by cases. We, uh, in our experience, there are times where patients have come for your, uh, with, to us over the years and suddenly we had this new DBT machine and then you see areas of distortions and then you don't know what to do with it. Maybe it's a radial scar like how we had yesterday. You can go on discussing its uh, treatment. Uh, it can go on and on till the cows come home. As regarding sea view, uh, it just increases your confidence on the perception. But if you have to, but you also have a tomo, right? So that area is better seen on tomo. I have sea view, sea view, but we have personally not found it of much use. When you have tomo, it is tomo is much better. DBT, yes, it helps us in detecting areas of distortion. DBT has low recall rates, detects cancer early, and margins of the lesion are seen much better. Um, we uh, then we heard three back-to-back -back talks on CEM. Dr. Nikita spoke on the workflow of CEM and some tick, tricks and trips. CEM, CEM is a functional imaging using dual energy technique. So we now so we do a low energy and then recombine images. She also spoke on the basics of CEM selection. How do you select cases? All the challenges that you face during the procedure, and then of course how to get the clinicians to understand its strengths, limitations. Uh, she also guided us on uh, knowing how to interpret, how to triage cases, and to understand that it's a one-stop shop, uh, its advantages over the MRI, and also to improve on it, and last but not the least, rat path correlation, and of course, audit. Dr. Vino's talk was excellent on reporting, uh, CEM reporting on the terminologies to be used according to the lexicon, background enhancement, whether it is symmetrical, additional, or uh, if additional um, is the lesion conspicuity, findings on low energy images and CEM detected, rest of the lexicon is the same as the ones which we use for MAMO, but when we give contrast, we add enhancement to the mass which is supported, which she very nicely showed cases. It can detect if the disease is multicentric or multifocal. The enhancement pattern is the same as that of MR, and it also helps us in dense breast troubleshooting with a lesion seen only on one view. Uh, for lesion conspicuity for morphology, mammal lexicon, extent of enhancement and associated features. And of course, initially we need to do structured reporting with the description. And uh, that was wonderful, uh, Dr. Vino. And the algorithm, if you see enhancement only on the, uh, on the RC image and not seen on the MRI, or if it is seen as an, as, as an asymmetry, which is seen only on one view. Uh, Dr. Rashmi, of course, we've always heard uh, wonderful talks from her on CM, whether CM was a boon or a bane. Of course, start, started with um, if it is cost effective in our country, availability of the equipment, how CM is better than MR, and uh, clinical outcomes, supplemental look for high risk lesions, CM is close to MR and used in high, di high risk cases, specificity and sensitivity is very close to MR. And studies show that CM is quite good as MRI, uh, but much better than mammography. Of course, uh, where its uh, strengths are in pre-op staging, response to NACT, 
intermediate to high risk patients as a one stop shop but MR is scores over where there are blind spots on the CEM for example in peripheral lesions. Um, uh, then we had Dr. Uh, Shilpa, amazing talk Shilpa as always, where have I written Shilpas, just a minute, sorry, one minute, one minute, yeah. Shilpa, so uh, we all know that density and tissue super superimposition can reduce the sensitivity of mammography. So for that we have to use supplemental ultrasound. But when we do ultrasound, more lesions pop up. Do you then? We we'll end up doing unnecessary biopsy. So we add a functional imaging to the anatomical imaging that we have. So where C MRI is helpful, and um, the summary is the same as the previous one, where uh, the on the uses of CEM versus uses of CEMRI. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much to all the esteemed speakers. I think it was really fantastic. Thank you.